I'm Matthew Reinhardt. And I'm Robert Sabuda. And, and uh, we make pop-up books. We're pop-up book artists. I've always been interested in children's books. Uh, that's all I've ever done. I don't really know how to do anything else. And I always had this, had this love, really, of paper, and I wanted to work in three dimensions with paper. So I thought, what could I do that would make an interesting book using paper? And I thought back to when I was a boy, I had lots of pop-up books, and I thought they were great. You know, you turn the page and something magical would happen on the inside. So I taught myself how to make pop-ups. The pop-up world began working almost in, exclusively in sort of with these white shapes, and that became one of my styles. Really very graphic, very bold, very simple looking pop-ups. And even though they appeared simple, they were very complex behind, behind the scenes where the magic was taking place, they were complex because it's a, it's a three-dimensional physical world. The paper has to obey certain levels of physics. It is very restrictive in some aspects. It's, it's up to us to try to pull, to try to force the paper to do what we want it to do in three dimensions. This, of course, is an alphabet book. In terms of uh, pop-up books, this was definitely a unique kind of a title. I remember distinctly like how hard making this particular pop-up was then and how now I know that it's so easy to make, but I remember thinking this is the best that I can do. This is Winter's Tale. This is inspired by my childhood growing up in Michigan. The books are much more than just books. They become these art objects. Absolutely beautiful. So what we do is we make um, our own papers here. This is all cut paper collage. We start off with all these different colors of paper that we make. We use sponges and different kinds of tools to scratch surfaces. Just a whole, I mean really we make a library of colors. So after drawing a picture, I will color it in by placing pieces of paper in specific spots. It's a little teeny weeny tiny mosaic of paper. So after I'd been working on my white series for a while, I was interested in doing something a bit more classic. And The Wonderful Wizard of Oz is one of my favorite books. This is the beginning of uh, my, my love affair with spinning in pop-up books, which we do now quite a bit. Of course, The Emerald City, in the original book, you had to wear your green spectacles, and then everything when you, green when... and fabulous. It's the original words, the original text. So, oh, melting, melting, melting oh, away. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, again a classic that I really was aching to do. One of the things that I really like about this pop is the fact that it's an all-around pop. Yeah. If you peek inside, you can actually see inside Alice, Alice in every part of the house. For something like this, we have to really think outside the box because yes, they're cards, but the idea is to convey flight in a structure that has to be very strong and very solid. I was lucky enough to be able to retell Cinderella, and this is based on the original French story. A different style of artwork was used for this. This was actually a colored pencil and watercolor. Okay, this is my favorite pop in Cinderella uh, because it's just so intricate. Along with the story, as you're opening the side flaps, as you open this last part, a secret pop-up opens and works automatically and tells us they lived happily ever after. As a child, I, I loved you know, dinosaur and animal books, and uh, I, sometimes they were a little dry. And I wanted to make something kind of light and fun and interesting. Being a dinosaur lover, I know that if I was to see a dinosaur, the first thing I'd want to see is T-Rex coming straight at me. Oh, how cool, at the end of the book, uh, the flying dinosaur would be able to fly away off the page. We knew that after we were on land with the dinosaurs, we'd go underwater and see what lived in, in the prehistoric oceans. Here is a megalodon. Megalodon was the original Jaws. If you look down his throat, you can actually see a goldfish tail. Megabeast is about prehistoric mammals and other prehistoric animals that we weren't able to include in the other books. This is a Quetzalcoatlus, which was the largest of the flying reptiles. I really wanted to make something that's wings spread out. All these are, are manufactured by hand. We design it, you know, by hand, and, and then they put it together by hand, and then it's a hand-enjoying kind of book. So yeah, it really goes from very our old hands school. to their hands to your hands. 
I think that one of the things that we really like about our books is that we can create sort of interactive books but that don't require any electronics. There's a certain love that humans have with actual books in their hand. Not only is it a world in words, but it's a world in words, pictures, and action, you know, actual mm -hmm. 3D world. And I think that's a rare thing in today's bombarded world for young readers. Mm -hmm.